a cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Hi everybody, Dave Vellante here. Jeff Frick and I are back. This is EMC World 2014. We're live from Las Vegas. Terry McClure is here. She's a senior analyst at ESG, follows the, the whole file, unstructured data, all the, the, the file sharing, syncing, all that good stuff. One of the best in the business. Terry, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. That was a great intro. Thank you, Dave. Well, great <laughs> EMC World, huh? What do you think? It has been phenomenal. Um, it's just been a deluge of information coming at us for three solid days. I'm fire hosed out, but, uh, yeah, but it I mean, was all real good. People always ask me who was the, who was the most interesting guest you saw today, and I think I can't think of one guest, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Was anything that really jumped out uh, that you can talk about that you saw that excited you uh, this week? Maybe customer conversations or technology progressions or just epiphanies that you had. Well, I, you know, I have to love some of the customer examples that I've seen. I mean. Um, I've been in the analyst track for the last couple of days, and, and, and uh, some of the things that we saw was uh, Indiamo, the, the Indi how, how EMC technology is helping speed the development of prosthetics and, and, and leg braces and, and such and, uh, via the use of 3D imaging from weeks, where kids, or months even, where kids outgrow them between the time that they do the molding and, and the development of the prosthetic to, to days, literally days, so they can help kids walk within days. So I love those stories that, talk, that, that show how technology is really making a difference in our lives, and that was one of them. Mm -hmm. So um, so this whole, um, this whole unstructured data space, I mean, we've been talking about it for years, we all see the numbers, all the data's going on. So I mean, a lot of people don't like that term, you know, it's kind of <laughs> dated. Um, but it is what it is. But it is what it is, right. Uh, and it's your wheelhouse, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's file, I mean, this whole file sharing thing is, is exploded, and so it's obviously great for, yep. for, for, for you and your, and your business, I presume, and just a lot of people trying to understand it, a lot of enterprises trying to replicate the consumer model. What are you seeing in the marketplace, the, the, the big trends in the areas that you follow? Yeah, so, so for somebody like me that covers file, object, the whole unstructured data market, this week has just been you know, a gold mine yeah, yeah. of announcements <laughs> and such. Uh, and you know, some of the interesting market trends that we see in our research have been, you know, we, we dug into kind of how customers would prefer to deploy their online file sharing collaboration solutions, the, 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 you, know, um, you know, the way they access their data from their mobile devices. And our research was really interesting. No surprise, we saw that the bulk of the deployments out there for business use cases of online file sharing and collaboration is cloud-based. They're using a, a public cloud service that they're subscribing to via SaaS. But, and, and that was 84% of the people we, 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 wow, we okay, yeah. uh, so that's a big sense, deployment, right. it makes sense. That's been out the longest, it's the most mature, people have heard easy. of it, it's had the most press, it's quick and easy. But what we also found is amongst that group that's already deployed a cloud-based service, uh, 97% of them would really like to put some or all of their data on-prem. 97% of They're those nervous. are already using a cloud-based solution. There's a number of reasons. Um, certainly they're nervous about having their data out in the cloud. I, I don't think the, the Snowden and NSA stuff did, did them any favors. In fact, we asked the key reasons that they wanted to keep data in-house, and um, one of the top reasons was third-party access to data that might be in my system. Not, not service provider access to data that might be in my system, which was you know, what we used to hear, the, the service provider has the keys and the data, their employees can get my data, but third-party access, which you know, that was our NSA answer, right? So that certainly has people nervous, but another big driver is um, customers really want to leverage their existing IT investments. They've got big investments in things like Isilon, they've got big investments in NetApp, they've got big investments in existing file and storage infrastructures and document management systems like uh, SharePoint and Documentum. And they're not going to throw those away because people need mobile access to their data. What they want is to be able to leverage those investments but somehow mobilize them. And, and so that's what's interesting about what EMC has done with Simplicity and Isilon. And what some of the Simplicity, uh, Simplicity announcements talked about this week. They talked about giving customers the ability to tie in to the SharePoint implementations, to tie into the Documentum implementations, to carry forward the permissions, to carry forward all the ACLs, to carry forward, um, to, to lock and unlock the content, but done via Simplicity. So now I've unlocked that data that's been locked behind those content stores. I don't have to log into a VPN to get them. And I can 
access them and edit them on my mobile device. So I'm, I'm not throwing away that investment. And if I want to migrate away from that investment, I can do it over time. So essentially, what you're finding in your research is that people want to replicate the, uh, the facile nature of the public cloud, the simplicity of the public cloud, but, but, but they want to have that secure, sleep at night environment, they can exactly in inject it. the edicts of the corporation in terms of policy and yep. audit and security and compliance and all that stuff. Yes. What about the cost factor? What do you, what do you, do you have you taken a look at that in your research? And um, do CFOs you know, embrace that? Or do they say, oh, just keep it in the cloud? What are you, what are you seeing there? Well, I mean, there's the risk reward issue, right? So, you know, the, if, if I've already got an investment in Isilon, I'm, I'm not going to throw it away. So, um, Certainly, there's not new cost. There's, so that's there's new an cost asset in, that's depreciating. It's an, it's an, it's an the asset books, that's depreciating yeah. in the books that I can leverage. Same thing with the VNX or something like that. So, so you can take advantage of your existing investments. And um, so, from a cost standpoint, it may actually be more effective to just yeah, because bring it's in the a return on asset play. It, it's a return yeah, on asset okay. play. Right. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, so, a lot in a lot of cases, depending on where you are in your cycle, it's it's actually going to be more it, cost effective. And, I guess you could argue that, you know, I always say this, renting is always more expensive than, than owning, you know, depending, but. Right, and then and then you look at some of the costs at scale when it comes to going outside mm -hmm. and scaling to tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of users, and uh, the, the capacity and some of the trade-offs really start to, to, to mitigate for, for, for the cost. So I don't follow this that closely, but my understanding is simplicity when EMC Bottom was running on AWS. Yep. And, and and um, KK was telling us they've, they've essentially brought that in on-premise, Isilon example, the sort of use case that you were describing. Mm -hmm. um, is that AWS piece gone? Is no, that still, no, no. so it's, you can still swipe a credit card and. You can, you can still, you, you know, what, what Simplicity gives you and what we're seeing emerge from a couple of major vendors in this space is the ability to pick where your data, what data lives where. So on-premise or? On-premise versus off. cloud. So, so in our research, we asked, we asked companies, do you have any data that, that, that and if so, what type, that, absolutely cannot be stored in the cloud. And 90% of the companies we spoke with said, yeah, they've got data that they absolutely forbid to be in the cloud. So now with this type of a hybrid solution, I can say, okay, this class of data, that lives in-house on Simplicity, but I do want some of the economies of scale of, of starting to shift to the cloud and starting to transform into the cloud for those things that I, I deem are safe for the cloud. So I'll put this stuff in the cloud and my important stuff stays on-prem. So it depends on what your leverage points are. Did you have, do you have any visibility on that 90% uh, who said there's absolutely no way we could put this stuff in the cloud, who actually put stuff in the cloud without the IT guys knowing it? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you got a gut feel there? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't uh, think it would be a very high percentage. Something, right? Yeah, right? Do yeah. you think it would be a very it's high percentage? Uh, it's a high percentage. Shadow IT thing? <laughs> um, <laughs> we actually did some research last year into uh, regulated environments, and we wanted to understand just how much uh, risk there was out there of that data that absolutely can't be in the cloud being in the cloud. In our regulated environment research, I think um, uh, 50, I, I don't remember the numbers exactly, but somewhere between 50 and 70% of those companies that had regulated data said they were sure that their employees were storing some regulated data that shouldn't be in the cloud in the cloud. So this is the king has no clothes research oh, that you did. <laughs> yeah, and that, so that shadow IT, is a, it's, it's, a, it's a huge issue. And it's really imperative for IT to get their arms around that and start start looking at solutions that might meet their needs of the of the employees to share their data on on their mobile devices and IT to secure it, and 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 that's something I want to bring up because that's a big challenge is that usability factor. It's not enough just to roll out a solution that allows employees to to sync their data to mobile devices. You need to you need your employees to use it because it's way too easy to go to the consumer solution if you don't like it, mm -hmm. right? So you really it, it's an interesting paradigm where IT never had to be that concerned about how easy it was for the user. Is, is, is the business going to get its return on investment? Is it going to do what we want for the back office operations? But this is really like, our users really have to like this, because if they don't use it, we're at just as much risk as we were before we deployed it. Because it's way too easy to go outside of the boundaries. And then, Terry, what about not necessarily file sharing applications, but just data in, data applications, productivity applications in the cloud yeah. like in Evernote? So I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not uh, sending files anywhere, but you know, I'm keeping track of what I need to do. I'm making myself notes. I've got attachments. I've got meetings. I've got all kinds <laughs> of stuff. Oh, and yes. Evernote's a great tool You're for You're on me. your so mobile. I'm not, I'm not I'm on the uh, Dropbox. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I the unstructured data that they think is secure in our email system in case there was ever an audit or whatever. I think Evernote is a, a big hole in, <laughs> in the enterprise right now. Um, because people are sitting in meetings, and I mean product roadmap meetings, financial meetings, and they're taking their notes in Evernote, and it's going off into the ether somewhere. And, and I'm waiting for the sync and share vendors. Some have note-taking applications, 
Um, but, but nobody's really come up with my Evernote alternative and sync and share in one, and I'd, I'd really like to see that that happen so I can put my notes with my files and have everything in one place, because I've got a bunch of stuff in Evernote and a bunch of, of, of stuff in my Word and, and PowerPoint documents. And, but I, I think, I think, I think um, because nobody's come up with a good solution for that, Evernote's got an opportunity with Evernote for business, but, but I, think, uh, I still think there's a big unaddressed issue for security in the enterprise right now, right there. So, so you have a bias, obviously. You're an advocate for the IT practitioners, trying to help them you know, protect themselves. Absolutely. So, so you must have been stoked when uh, EMC bought Simplicity. I was stoked when EMC bought Simplicity. I mean, it's funny, I've been covering this market for maybe three years now. We've done a ton of research into it. And um, so it's been interesting to watch it evolve from when I started covering it in 2011, there were maybe seven, I think there were eight vendors in my first report that had solutions that had an admin console that were designed for business to give IT that centralized management and right. control, and Simplicity was one of them. Um, the last report I did, not everybody was in it, and I, I think I had maybe 50 vendors in it, and I didn't have everybody in it. There's maybe wow. 100 or more vendors that talk to me Holy now in this cow. space. It's been fascinating to watch it evolve, but I think it's really strategic for EMC to, and, and companies like EMC to address this. I think it's a business opportunity for EMC, and, and, and it's a business opportunity for their customers to be able to capture and control and manage you know, all that data that, that's been leaking out of the enterprise for so long. So, so um, you know, EMC has the connections with the right people within the enterprise to, 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 to help companies deal with it. So, um, you were talking off camera that you analyzed the Vox S1. Is this where you put um, me on the hot spot? Yeah, this is where I put me on the hot spot. <laughs> so I was just uh, curious, I mean, uh, Aaron Levy just canceled the IPO. Um, well, did he cancel, he, he well, no, no, postponed delayed it. it. Postponed it, sorry, canceled it. They were scheduled and you know, <laughs> stocks are, are down, you know, the cloud stocks are down, so yet again, the little guy gets screwed. But yeah, uh, of so course. buy low, sell high? No, not for you, Main Street. <laughs> uh, but, so. okay, we could do a whole section on that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. a whole other story. So, it's not just there. <laughs> but, um, so, and I don't think it's greed, He's, his, his ownership's actually quite low now, but, uh, but so I think he really wants to you know, see this thing through. And sure. He's had offers, obviously. To, he's had some big uh, offers. Yeah, so he, he's got big, big plans and big visions, but you read the S1, I didn't. Yep. What, what, uh, what was your takeaway there? What did your research say? You know, it's tough. A, a lot of people have pointed out the fact, I mean, they've got 7% of their customers are paying customers, and 93% of their customers are free. They've got, the, you know, the bulk of their you know, burn rate is in what they call sales and marketing, but that really what goes goes into that is their infrastructure to support the free customers. So their big challenge is they've got to convert free customers in in to paid customers. I mean, spend two dollars to get one, and that's what they're doing. They're spending yeah. two dollars to get one. So they've been working on converting business customers for three or four years now, and only seven percent are. are is this one customers. of those that you can make it up in volume type of stories? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. We've seen those before. We've seen those. Um, they they need to. And sometimes it can if, happen. If the volume is, continues with these ratios, it's, it's never going to happen, right? I mean, the S1 said there is no clear path to profitability. So they need to win over enterprise customers. They need to win over those site licenses. They've got some big wins. But, but to do that, in, in my view, is you know, there, there's a big market opportunity out there for file sync and share. Um, they, uh, but but the, the political climate is such that uh, they need to have a data center in Europe. They don't have a data center in Europe, and I don't think European customers are that trusting of putting their data in the U.S. Um, you've got the Snowden effect, I think, that's a challenge on the business and, and kind of elongate sales cycles. So they've got to have a very long security discussion with their customers to get them comfortable with how they secure the data and, and where they keep the keys. Um, so I think they've got a couple of big challenges out there that they're going to need to overcome to get that broad enterprise adoption to start building up the ratio of, of the paid business customers. So guys like Box and Dropbox, they are they yeah. the big competitors of Simplicity? Is that sort of an obvious question, or not necessarily? Or is it is something else, like do nothing, or? Well, do nothing yeah. is the, I mean, right now, we're, we're still really early on in this market. I mean, uh, a couple years ago when we did the research, we had 28% of the um, companies that we spoke with had adopted it, but only for specific departmental use cases and individual users, right? They, they tow in the water type of implementations. So this year when we researched uh, the, the adoption, we found that, you know, I think it was 48% of the companies we spoke with had adopted it, but toe in the water. Specific departments that really needed mobile access or collaboration um, or, or individual users. Um, so, uh, so I think the big competitive issue right now is do nothing. I mean, we walk in the door and there isn't a solution out there. And then, you know, Dropbox gets brought in and Box get brought, gets brought in because they've got the brand and name recognition. But then 
EMC is already in there. Citrix is already in there. So, so you know, HDS is in there. So, you know, you've got these big guys with these existing relationships in there that probably have a leg up and a trusted relationship already with the vendors. So that kind of gives them an inside track. All right, Terry, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for coming right. on theCUBE. It was uh, great Dave, to see you. you always know. great to see you. Awesome Thank you very job. much. Awesome uh, job. Tons great of research. To you, Love the research angle. Real data coming out of Terry McClure and ESG. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back to wrap. Myself and Jeff Frick, this is EMC World Live 2014. This is theCUBE.